Coming up on 5-Minute News. Russia launches largest attack on Ukraine in months. Thai PM orders tighter gun control after mass shooting. And Mississippi police murder black teenager outside store. It's Tuesday, October 11. I'm Anthony Davis. Russia retaliated on Monday for an attack on a critical bridge by unleashing its most widespread strikes against Ukraine in months, a lethal barrage that smashed civilian targets, knocked out power and water, shattered buildings and killed at least 14 people. Ukraine's emergency services said nearly 100 people were wounded in the morning rush hour attacks that Russia launched from the air, sea and land against at least 14 regions, spanning from Lviv in the west to Kharkiv in the east. Many of the attacks occurred far from the war's front lines. Though Russia said missiles targeted military and energy facilities, some struck civilian areas while people were heading to work and school. One hit a playground in downtown Kiev, and another struck a university. The attacks plunged much of the country into a blackout, depriving hundreds of thousands of people of electricity into Monday night, and creating a shortage so severe Ukrainian authorities asked people to conserve and announced they will stop power exports to Europe starting on Tuesday. Power outages also often deprive residents of water, given the system's reliance on electricity to run pumps and other equipment. Andriy Yermak, a senior advisor to President Volodymyr Zelensky, said the strikes had no practical military sense and that Russia's goal was to cause a humanitarian catastrophe. Putin vowed a tough and proportionate response if further Ukrainian attacks threaten Russia's security. No one should have any doubts about it, he told Russia's Security Council by video. The head of Ukraine's law enforcement said Monday's attacks damaged 70 infrastructure sites, of which 29 are critical. Zelensky said that of the 84 cruise missiles and 24 drones Russia fired, Ukrainian forces shot down 56. Thailand's Prime Minister Prayuth chan on Monday ordered law enforcement agencies to tighten gun ownership rules and crack down on drug use following a mass killing by an ex-policeman at a daycare centre that has left the nation in shock. A total of 36 people, including 24 children, were killed in a knife and gun rampage last week by an ex-cop who later killed himself in Uthai Sawan, a town 310 miles northeast of Bangkok. It was one of the worst child death tolls in a massacre by a single killer in recent history. The Prime Minister has ordered government registrars to revoke the gun licenses of registered owners who have reportedly behaved in a way that threatens society and creates chaos or causes unrest alongside a crackdown of illegal gun sales, weapon smuggling and the use of illegal firearms. Thai authorities plan to recall guns from officials and police officers who have misused their firearms or have behaved aggressively on duty. Regular mental health checks will also be required for gun license applicants and holder, the police chief said. Gun ownership is high in Thailand compared with other countries in Southeast Asia. Illegal weapons, many brought in from strife-torn countries, are common. But ownership is nothing like the scale of that of the United States. A black teenager in Mississippi was taken off life support days after Gulfport police shot him in the head outside a discount store, and his relatives are questioning officers' actions. 15-year-old Jaheem McMillan was shot on Thursday. The Harrison County coroner, Brian Switzer, confirmed that the Gulfport High School freshman died on Saturday after he was taken off life support at USA University Hospital in Mobile, Alabama. An autopsy was scheduled for today, Switzer said. Macmillan's mother, Katrina Mateen, said that when she arrived at the store after her son was shot, officers handcuffed her and walked her across the street. In a video taken by a bystander after the shots were fired, Macmillan could be seen on the ground in front of the door to the store. A witness said police handcuffed the teenager after shooting him. 
The Gulfport Police Chief, Adam Cooper, said police took four others, all believed to be minors, into custody. The Mississippi Bureau of Investigation is examining the shooting of Macmillan. MBI investigates all police shootings in the state, and the Attorney General's office is in charge of any prosecutions. Gulfport Police said in a news release that the shooting occurred after they responded to a 911 call about several minors waving guns at motorists. Officers pulled the youth over in the parking lot of a family dollar store. Cooper said the youth fled from the vehicle and that one of his officers engaged with an armed individual before firing. The police department has not released the race of the officer. Macmillan's family doesn't believe he was armed and their supporters are calling for the release of camera footage of the shooting. On Sunday evening, family, friends and community leaders held a vigil for the murdered teenager as questions about police brutality continue to be asked. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate. Delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.